Lastly, we move on to our 2019 Societal Leader winner. Please put your hands together for Mr. Arn Chon Pond. Thank you very much uh, for having me here. Uh, I also like to say that uh, thank you for having me and for this award. And it's a very great honor for me. And I really appreciate everything you stand for uh, around leadership. I like to also say that this award is not just for me. It is for all the cultural leaders uh, we have in Cambodia, the master artists, uh, the next generations of young artists, and art managers who uh, are all striving to make the arts the heart of Cambodia society and make expression through the arts and culture the center of Cambodia's future. You all have mentioned um, the overcoming advers uh, adversary, and I should tell you a bit about my own journey and the journey of uh, why I started Cambodian Living Arts as an organization. In 1975, I was just uh, 11 years old when the Khmer Rouge took over Cambodia, and they forced uh, my family and separate my family away like millions of other Cambodians. I was forced into, uh, to live in a temple, to die in a Buddhist temple converted into a killing place where the Khmer Rouge uh, killed every day, day in and day out, and I was forced to live there and to die there, to work there with about 500, 700 children there. And we were forced to uh, watch a lot of killing and doing a lot of bad things that we didn't want to do. The hardest part for me was that you're not allowed to cry. If you cry, they kill you. So I learned how to shut myself off from the feeling completely from the smell, the blood. And in the middle of all this killing, the Khmer Rouge forced us to also uh, playing propaganda song. I, I raised my hand, probably risky, that they wouldn't trick me to, when I, as soon as I raised my hand, they would kill me. They wanted to start a music band. So they have kids playing music, learning how to play music. They brought a master, a musician, old master, white-haired, I remembered, and I didn't even know his name. And he, he looked at us in the eyes and said, you have, you have to learn fast. Some few kids who did not learn fast enough and did not come to class the next day. I was very lucky. My, my first teacher also was killed a week, two weeks after teaching us. They brought an, oh, oh, an, another master, Master Mac, who we became like a father and son. We helped each other to survive the ordeals. At that place also, I have watched my little brother and little sister starve to death and can't do much, can't do nothing to help them. In 1979, when the Vietnamese invaded Cambodia and ousted the Khmer Rouge, I was caught like thousands of other children by the Khmer Rouge who took away my instrument and gave me guns. We were not trained how to use the guns. We were put into a full-blown war with the Vietnamese, against the Vietnamese. And again, I witnessed many, many children shot and can't do much to help them. 
I also never want ever again to feel helpless and powerless to help my friend who shot and need help. I finally escaped to a refugee camp in Thailand many months later and have met a man, Peter Pan. They call him American. For the first time, I met an American man who later became my fa adopted father and took me to the United States and raised me there. I had a hard time in living in America. I, sm I was making fun of, I was put into high school, that was the first grade I ever had. I had to learn ABC while I was in high school. I was laughed at by the American kids. I thought my life in America was better, but it was the opposite. I couldn't almost survive. I survived the jungle of Cambodia, but I couldn't almost survive the jungle of America, the mall of America. I'm not sure why they make fun of you. And my heart still hurt even today. In the 90s, I decided to return to Cambodia and found Master Max after 25 years on the street, drunk. And lucky he survived. And we recognized each other and we hugged each other and I, I saw him laughing, smiling at me, but tears from his eyes. And he said, where have you been all these years? And many, many other master artists um, I found a, a handful Master Mike looked at me and said, you must have something for me to do. I don't want to die on the street and drunk, be a drunk guy. And I discovered some more living, uh, they were living in poverty and no longer playing music. I found out during the trip that the genocide have, uh, have killed 90% of Cambodian artists, two million of Cambodian people, including my own family and almost entire my own family. They were targeted because I remember, I now find out that my mom and my dad was an actor, an actor. they own an opera company. That was why they were targeted. And that was why the reason I was, I was learning music was faster than anyone else at the, the temple. And music saved my life in some, some way. And the music that we were passed on from generation to, from master to student without writing down meant that this art were in danger of being lost forever. And if this master could not pass on their arts to the next generation, the culture would die with them. And people wouldn't have any way to discover the power of music for themselves. And I realized we had to get all the master artists together and get them to start teaching quickly. That's how Cambodian Living Art was started. We matched masters and students and supported classes that, so that this art form would live on. And now Cambodian Living Art 20th anniversary and we have come so far. Not only are we supporting the master artists but we now supporting young artists and art manage managers creating the next generation of leaders in Cambodia. Lots of students and very, uh, our very first class, the students of our very first class are now running their own classes, have set up their own performance and troupe in business and are creating music, new dance and film and literature and visual art, you name it, all over Cambodia. I'm sorry the Khmer Rouge killed everybody but he missed the boy. We have scholarship and also residency program, residency program, training for researchers and fellowship to not only keep the artists alive, but let Cambodians become leaders in the art. A 
few weeks ago, I witnessed the, we call the rap, rap fest. Uh, we, for the first time, we brought uh, many teachers, many artists from Laos, Vietnam, Japan, Korean, and Thailand, from different places in Asia to Siem Reap, where for the first time that I became realized that my dream was our dreams now closer to reality when I saw a beautiful young uh, musician from Laos with the Cambodian beautiful girl playing exchange musical instruments and play each other instruments and laugh not carrying guns and shoot each other like I did. We went through a lot. We went through so much pain. I'm very close. We went through so much pain and losses. Even before the Khmer Rouge, American legally bombed in Cambodia, and a lot of people died there. And then it culminating with the killing field. And if Cambodia can be the leader of the arts and using the arts to heal ourselves and transform our society, transform our life, and hopefully transform the world in this way, and I, am, I can imagine what we can do together for the world like today. So I thank you for organizing this. And I'm, as a gift, I would like to uh, play a song from, from my, for my flute. This is my weapon now. I bring it everywhere. <laughs> Even though I'm not professional in music or anything like that, I know more how to dismantle the guns then learn how to play music, but I try at least. And I'm happy to play for you today as my deep gratitude to being a role model for all of us and your hard work to make this thing happen all around the world. And we need, we need it badly than ever before. I warn you, Cambodia is only, only an hour away from here. and hate does, 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 doesn't discriminate. So we need to teach our children love. And I'm not ashamed to cry today because I felt the love from you, I felt the love from the world and my new family that I dream of.
this particular song called um, uh, um, uh, lullaby called uh, Bompe in my language. This also this particular song also prohibited by the Khmer Rouge, and I I, I realize that in many different countries around the world they have their own lullabies, beautiful song, you know, a soothing song for every every culture, every uh, country. Ladies and gentlemen, An Chon Pon, our societal leader winner. Ladies and gentlemen, your winners of the ICLIF Leadership Energy Awards 2019. Essential ideas, eloquently expressed. Thank you so much for being with us here today. We are honored and we are humbled. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, your winners